Hello ladies and gentlemen, hello chess lovers. Today's question is, is it really difficult to calculate very long variations in chess? I don't know the answer to this, but I do think that there is a little bit of a myth surrounding this whole topic um, that says that yes, long variations are incredibly difficult to calculate and visualize and uh, we shouldn't engage and so on. And I don't agree with this. Actually, I am a little bit on the other side of uh, the debate where I do think that long variations tend to be very often rather simple to calculate compared to some other scenarios. And I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. But before I jump right into it, a quick shout out to Chessbase India. Um, I am following these guys on YouTube, Twitter and uh, the picture thingy, Instagram. And uh, I found on Instagram a really awesome Pogosian study published by them. And I actually pinched that position uh, for the purposes of this video. So thank you guys. And once again, uh, be sure that you guys follow them too, because uh, they have got some really good stuff uh, on their various media outlets. So the other day I was uh, having a lesson with a very young student of mine and I showed them the world famous uh, Edward Lasker Thomas game, which is known by almost every single chess player on planet Earth, except uh, as it turned out to be one of the most popular YouTuber and streamer who didn't know the existence of this game. Um, anyway, so Queen H5 was played with the sneaky idea of check Carino checkmate. Black played Queen E7. And at this point I asked my student why Queen E7 is even a move. How is it stopping the threat? He tells me that Knight F6 takes uh, stops the mate on H7. And then I'm like, okay, so what should we do? To which after a short hesitation, he responds with, we should take on h7. And I'm like, haha, yeah, that's my student. So, challenge for you now, ladies and gents. Can you calculate the entire checkmating sequence, beginning with queen takes h7, without moving pieces, any shenanigans? Pause the video, give it a red hot go. My student came up with a solution after one miscalculation in the variation. Uh, he came up with the following idea, queen h7, king h7, knight f6, double check, king h6, knight e g4, king g5, h4 check, king f4, g3, king f3. And this is the point where most people make uh, the only common mistake in this position, which is that he claimed bishop e4 to be a mate. It is a very common visualization mistake that we are focusing on a very narrow segment of the board instead of looking at it as a whole, overlooking that bishop takes e4 actually reigns on the party. So then he corrected his mistake by suggesting bishop e2 instead, king g2, rook h2 check, king g1, and uh, either king d2 or castles is the checkmate. Looks quite long and scary, but in fact the opposite is the truth and I will tell you soon why. So this is the checkmating variation and it's all over Red Rover. Now, was this line very long? I would say it was. Was this line very difficult to calculate? I would say no. And I tell you why. The reason why, because the vast majority of very long variations in chess are checking lines. And by checking, we mean that they are ridiculously forcing and there is no variations whatsoever. No sidelines, nothing. It's just one narrow path towards the finish line. And when your calculation is simply to pursuing one line, it means that we are eliminating creativity, counter ideas by black, trying to find out our opponent's plans, how he can or they can rather um, counter attack, uh, use countermeasures against what we want to do. So 95% about chess calculation is just gonski. We don't do that. We just check, 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 check. And in the end, there is a mate or there isn't one. And that means calculating longer lines, it makes calculating longer lines remarkably easy in that regard. The only challenge you are facing here is to keep up with what's where, with other words, visualization. Now, the good news is, is that that's all you need. The bad news is that visualization is usually the greatest challenge for most adult improvers, club players and the likes. And the other bad news is that as far as my theory is concerned, the only way to improve visualization is to practice exactly this. Calculate long straight lines. Whether it's pawn endings or studies or 
variations like this, it doesn't matter. But if you want to get better at this, guess what? You have to do this. So that's my view on this. And that's uh, how it goes. Now, as for the Chess Base India study. So the other day I came across this uh, Bogosian study on their uh, Instagram. And uh, the caption said that, can you find out this cute King Chase, how it goes? And I'm like, hmm, sure, I will give it a go. And uh, very quickly, I figured out the whole solution, um, which wasn't too tricky. So my thinking went, no, pause the video if you want to do this yourself. And now I show you what I was thinking. So I looked at knight d3 check, king uh, b3, queen b2. I noticed king a4, queen b4 mate. Sideline mates almost always indicate that you are on the right track. And then after knight d3, king b3, queen uh, b2, king c4, queen c2 check. I also noticed that the king can't run that way because after queen c5, king a6, we have knight b4, beautiful mate. And then after king d5, queen c5 check, king e4, I got a little stuck because the knight is hanging on d3. And if knight f2 check, then the king comes to f3. And all of a sudden it has got three squares to go to didn't feel right at all. And then after a couple of seconds, it just clicked for me that, of course, when the king is here and my knight is here, I just need to go queen f5 check, forcing king f5, knight g3, king g6, knight f4, king g7, knight f5, king g8, knight takes e6, and now knight h6 and knight e7 mates are threatened. And in order to stop the latter, the knight e7 mate, this knight must go, but if it moves, it allows the mate here. Let me show you. Check, 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 check. And this is the difficult move where a little bit of creativity is required. After all, sacking a queen on an empty square is not an everyday sight. But now the final moves are really beautifully showcasing why queen f5 was a great idea. The king gets cornered. And once again, one of these checkmating moves can be avoided next move. Now that was a 10 moves calculation, but again, I insist that they weren't really hard because black just kept on running away from the checks and all I needed to do was to ensure that on those some of those very few sidelines when it could go two ways, the other way always uh, um, got met by an instant checkmate and that was the case. And here we go, we managed to calculate a 10 move puzzle which uh, ended in a beautiful checkmate. Again, I totally get it if it's difficult for you but I still argue that this is going to be the easier problem to tackle when it comes to calculation rather than the trying to figure out the opponent's plans, the counter chances, the whole lot. And to put this two in contrast, I'm going to show you one of my all time favorite puzzles, um, which looks like this. This is a black to move and win. Once again, we are looking at an actual game of chess. Needless to say that, uh, well, you don't know this yet, but I'm telling you that the continuation was missed in the game. This is a ridiculously tough puzzle to solve, despite of the fact that the entirety of the solution is two and a half moves. That's it. Black to move and win. Pause the video if you want to give it a go. But I'm telling you now that I consider this puzzle to be grandmaster level. And if you actually didn't know that this was a puzzle, then I would consider it to be 2600 GM and higher to, to tackle this, despite of the short uh, solution. So if you pause the video, fine, I'm going to show you now the solution. It's absolutely bonkers. So the only way to win for black here is to play rook f8, uh, which seems like it does not an awful lot. And after queen takes h3, the absolutely breathtaking knight d7 wins the game because now if the rook moves on the back rank anywhere we pick off the knight the knight is immune to all three captures because of uh, rook takes f1 back rank mate but the most amazing thing is is that after rook f8 check we just casually retake on f8 and now with white to move white has no adequate response to the two back rank checkmate threats because the g2 pawn is pinned the h2 pawn cannot move because of the queen and king e1, even that one doesn't resolve the problem of the back rank because queen e1 is a mate. An absolute bonkers, ridiculously beautiful, yet amazingly challenging solution and puzzle that uh, definitely would uh, trick a lot of chess players. So now I would like to go back to the original question and go like, 
So which one is harder, the long line or the significantly shorter one when there is a lot of creativity, subtle motifs, unexpected ideas, the, the creative aspect is well and truly there, whereas in the other one, it was just being able to follow, as I said, the straight path. I guess it's still up to debate, and it's totally okay if you struggle with the one that I don't think is that difficult. Both of them have got their remedies, but I do think, in fact, I'm pretty certain about this, that in the longer run, these types of puzzles uh, will pose a far greater challenge and this is where real calculating skills lie when you need to come up with very unique ideas and very unique um, concepts that may allow you to, to pull off a win that uh, features motives that were never seen before. So that's going to be it for today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. Do not forget to like, to comment, to sub, the usual YouTube shebangs. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Uh, bye for now. Cheers.